تبارك الله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء لها نرين الذنوب ومطردة لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكن خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن لم يتب فأولئك هم الظالمون صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى addresses the believers and says O oh ye who believe do not laugh at a people do not laugh at others one group of people should not laugh and mock and indulge in mockery towards another nor women should indulge in the mockery and laughter of against others for they may be better than you that one group may be better than the other and do not insult yourselves and do not use offensive names for one another and the worst kind of depravity is that which comes after iman and for and the one who does not seek forgiveness who does not seek repentance for him is the category of dhalimun, the category of the oppressors. Now, continuing from where we left off last week, where we dealt with the importance of recognizing the effect of sound on the heart, sound on the human soul, and sound in our world. And recognizing the importance, the effect, the power of the sound of the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is the word of Allah. The Qur'an is the word of the creator of the heavens and the earth. Of all that exists. And to have Allah's word on your tongue is to have the greatest honor of sound. Whether you understand or not. One effect is when you understand the meaning of it. But the mere sound of it also has power. It has effect. And for that, we are told in other verses of the Quran, Allah says, Allah nazzala ahsana al-hadith. That Allah has revealed the best of conversations, the best of discourse. Kitaban mutashabiha. That this is a book in which, a book in which there is no contradiction. Takshairu minhu al this is one of the effects of it. It's a double effect. When, you, when a person who believes in Allah recognizes that Allah is my creator and recognizes that this word, these words I'm hearing is from my creator, the skin of a person starts to shiver, quiver. We have the shivering down the spine in, and through the skin. تَقْشَعِرُّ الْجُلُودِ ثُمَّ تَلِينُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ تَقْشَعِرُّ مِنْهُ جُلُودُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ That those who fear Allah, their skin, their skin shiver, they tremble. ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ And this is followed by tranquility that descends upon their skin and upon their hearts. This is the effect of the Qur'an. 
on the skin and heart of the person. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَٰلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ And this is the guidance of Allah. يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ It is the guidance that Allah gives to whomsoever He pleases. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ And whosoever Allah allows to go astray, then there is no guidance for him. When we, are in, when we experience these states, it is a rahmah. This is a mercy. When you feel, when you experience these spiritual moments of listening to Qur'an, and you feel that it is sinking deep into your heart and into your soul, and the heart feels the warmth and the eyes overflow with tears, that is a rahmah. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is from Allah, that this, this, this that we feel when we listen to Qur'an, this is a mercy from Allah, it's a, it's a gift. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِغْتَنِمُوا الدُّعَاءَ فِي الرِّقَّةِ That when you experience these things, then make use, when you're experiencing this spiritual feeling, this, this overcoming of the power of Allah's word, then you should use it for dua. فَإِنَّهَا رَحْمَةٌ That it is a mercy from Allah. We should use it. Now, I said to you that I was going to deal with another question that has arose in this series of discussions that I've been having about, about music. And I urge you all who have not heard the entire series to go back and listen to it. It's on the internet in Daramax Tube. Um, you can go and listen to the series of these lectures so that you will get the entire gist of what I'm saying. But today I want to deal with a question that has arisen where people have said that you, you did not mention Shawkani, Imam Shawkani, which is a scholar who died on, in the year 1839. Re- relatively recently. And in Islam, we have a system of scrutiny and validation that decides what is right, what is valid, and what is invalid. What, is, what we can use, and what we can discard, and what we can accept as part of the core of our deen. And when it comes to this issue of music, there is a broad consensus of over a thousand years. Imam Shawkani is recent, but there's broad consensus about what is allowed and what is not allowed. And in this, in this regard, when it comes to what is the scrutiny and the verification of what is right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused to come into existence a system, a system of scrutinizing, deciding which is what, what is to be accepted and what is not. And that system is known as Isnad. What's it known as? Isnad. Isnad is the scrutiny of r- Verifying the source of the information. Checking who has said it, who has said what, and what is the value of it. Because Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak said, he said, لَوْلَ الْإِسْنَادِ لَقَالَ مَنْ شَاءَ مَا شَاءَ If there wasn't for Isnad, then anyone who wanted to say anything could have said it. And it could have been seen as part of the deen. Now Imam Shawkani here, he is listed, he wanted to make the argument, and if... He has made the argument, as I said, in some of the... There was some dis- discrepancy with the, with the word ghina. What does it mean? But even in the ones in which, he, if you accept that he said that these ma'azif, these instruments are allowed, and you look from where is he taking these things, you will find that the sources, the isnad that he has used, are all of a very, very low quality. They are not acceptable. They're not acceptable in, in hadith. They're not acceptable at the level of hadith. They're not uh, acceptable in the level of fiqh. He quotes from people, names like Allah ibn Rabbi uh, and, and um, uh, Abu al-Faraj al-Asfahani. These are ad-udaba. These are scholars of adab, of literature. They are not, they are not people that are dependable. In fact, they are muttaham bil kizb. They are accused of lying in things in the reports that they have performed. So we cannot depend on these reports even if Imam Shawkani makes a mistake, one person saying something cannot undo or unravel a thousand years of consensus. More than a thousand years of consensus, Islam is very clear on what is allowed and what is not allowed. So we cannot use this and don't let people corrupt your deen by mentioning, oh, Imam, Imam Shawkani says something. Ask for the proof. Ask for the ver- verification. And the verification is very clear. We have the, the, the qawl of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah who says, يَكْفِي تَفْسِيرُ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ بِأَنَّهُ الْغِنَى The tafsir of the Qur'an from the Sahaba and from the Tabi'een is sufficient for us to know that when Allah says lahwal hadith in the Qur'an, He means ghina and nothing else. He means this music. 
This same music that we are dealing with. So we should not allow this to come and destroy our, uh, our thousand, uh, over a thousand years of consensus on this matter. And people are trying to do this, and, I'm, and this is why I'm em emphasizing this. Now, to come to today's discussion, today's discussion we're dealing with the 11th Afa, the 11th calamity of the tongue. The 11th calamity of the tongue is a sukhriya wal istihza, which is related to the verse I read to you earlier, and this comes directly from the Quran. This is not something that, that becomes haram with intensity or with magnitude. It is completely haram because it comes directly from the Quran, and Allah says, لا يسخر. There is amr, there is command, there is, it's imperative that you should not do this. You should not involve yourself in sukhriya and istihza. Now what does this mean? This means mockery, laughing at people, doing caricaturing of people, jibing, jeering, sneering, pouring sar sarcasm, scorn, ragging, chaffing. All of these are part of sukhriya. And the definition in Arabic is al-istihqar, al al-istihqar wal istihza wa tambih al al-ayub wa naqais That you belittle people, you laugh at people, and you draw attention to the faults of people in order to get people to amuse people. And we do it for several reasons. It's because out of the, the place where it comes from is pride, that somehow we are better than these people, so we can laugh. And this is what the Quran is saying, that you laugh at others thinking that you are better than them, and you do not know that in fact that person is better than you. Now what are the things we laugh at in our world today? One of the things we laugh at is piety. Yes, when a pious person, when a person tries to be pious, we mock them. We said, oh, look, he's becoming, oh, Mulvi ban raya Mulvi ban raya. That like this person is becoming Mulvi because he's worn a beard. Or because he's starting to pray. Or because he's wearing sunnah clothes. And we, we, make, we make mockery of this. And we do not realize in the time, in, at the time of the Prophet wasallam, some of the munafiqeen were making mockery of the Qurra of Quran. The, the reciters of Quran, they, they mentioned something about their stomach and, and a few other things. And Rasulullah was told by Allah. Allah informed him, he said that this, these munafiqeen are saying this. This was in, in, in the battle of B B B Tabuk. And he stopped them. And he said, well, what are you saying? And they said, uh, this, is, this story is reported in the Quran. That, oh, we were driving and diving and we were laughing and joking. It was just joke. And then the response was, Qul. That was it with Allah and Allah's Quran and Allah's Prophet that you were making fun? Allah is saying, Allah takes it. So when somebody becomes pious and you make fun of them, what you're actually doing is that you're making fun of deen. You're making fun of Allah. You're making fun of Allah's guidance. And the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we, when we call people, oh, yeah, Mulvi ban oh, this is a Mulvi, oh, oh, Mulvi, and say it in a really derogatory and condescending manner, what are we doing? This is sukhriya, this is istihza, this is pulling people down. Another way of showing istihza is to quarrel with people, you know, is to say, is to, because people out of simplicity, they might make a mistake. People make mistakes, and then what do we do? We go, people, not everyone is equal. Just out of simplicity, a person might make a mistake and we draw people's attention to it. Oh, look, he doesn't even understand this or he doesn't do this. That is also not correct. For if we understand complex, complex things, if we are trained in certain things, then that should not make us feel so proud that we will destroy that everything else, that anyone else who cannot understand the things that we are, they're somehow below us. Because on the day of judgment, we have no idea. The one who has the more taqwa, the one who is closer to Allah, he is the one that will be above us on the day of judgment. Another one is difference. That people are different from us, so we can't deal with their difference, so we laugh at them. We say, okay, well, they're different from us. We, 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 they speak in a different way, as I said, with the accents. You know, we make fun of people's accents. When in fact, we all have accents. We cannot say, when we speak, we are speaking with an accent. Every time you speak, you speak with an accent. But if you laugh at people, then that is the other thing. Now, another one is misfortune, subhanAllah. And this is a big tragedy of our day today. That if somebody falls down, if somebody meets some misfortune, if something terrible happened to someone, we laugh at them. 
we laugh at them. And there's a story in Rasulullah Sallallahu at the time, there was a man, a, a Bedouin Arab, is coming on, a, on an unruly camel. And he was trying to get close to Rasulullah Sallallahu and saying things that, oh, uh, uh, and, and every time he tried to speak, the, the camel would buckle, would, would jump, and he would get, and, and some of the people there started laughing, laughing at him. And eventually, because they were laughing, he was trying harder to control the camel. And then eventually the camel threw him off and he hit his head and he died. So they said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said that he has killed him. That look, his, his camel has killed him. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes, naam. Wa bidamihi. And your, and your mouths are all filled with his blood as well. By laughing at people in misfortune. This has become a real problem today. We laugh at people. We laugh at people's misfortune. And not recognize that this is a problem. That this can become something of danger for us on the day of judgment. And we live in a time today where we are indulging in global mockery. Not, not, you know, the human eye can only see on earth, because of the curvature of the earth, we can only see up to five, five kilometers. Because the earth curves, you can't see further. But, so we can see what's happening here. In the five mile radius, we can see. And that's if there's no buildings. But we can only see this much. But nowadays what's happened is something, if, it's, if somebody meets misfortune 10,000 miles away, halfway across the world, within minutes it's in our pocket on our phones, and we're laughing at them. This year, an example I had was that in Hajj, someone jumped up on the door of the Kaaba, a Haji. Out of his yearning to get close to the Kaaba, he jumped up on the door, and the guard pulled him and pulled his clothes, pulled his ihram, and it came off. And someone videoed that, and circulated it all around the world. Within minutes, Haji, a Hajj, a Mu'min, a believer, trying, get, trying to get close to Allah, and his, his, his aura is exposed, and we have filmed that and circulated it all around the world, and all the Muslims are laughing. Do we know what will happen on the Day of Judgment if Allah says to him, all the people who laughed at you, now come and surrender your a'mal, surrender your deeds against this person. This abd of mine who was trying to get close to my house so that I can forgive him. And now they and you all laughed at him. So laughing, sukhriya, is something that we have to be very careful with. We do not laugh at people. We do not mock people. Because the tragedy is, as I said, we live in this time where, because of the internet, we are able to indulge in global mockery. Looking at people, oh, this person's falling down, laugh. And this is what we circulate all the time. If we are involved in circulating these videos and laughing at people when people are suffering and it's causing pain, then know that that will not go. That will not go just as a laugh. It will not go on the day of judgment. This is recorded that in the hadith, in, in the Quran, Allah says, well, uh, uh, kitab. They will say in the, on the day of judgment, kitab. What about, what's, what's it with this book? What's it with this book? Oh, just, oh, woe to us that everything is in this book, even the small thing and the large thing. Abdullah ibn Abbas translated this tafsir. He said the small thing and the, and the, and the large thing, the small thing, is the smirking smile that we take, we're laughing at people. It's the smile. And the, and the large thing is the laughing loudly at people. That is what Allah is talking about on the day of judgment. This will happen. That we will be in regret for laughing and talking in this way towards people. We should recognize that man tatabba' awrata akhihi al-Muslim tatabba' Allahu awratuhu. The one who follows the, uh, the, the misguided and the one who follows the sins of his brother, Allah will follow your sins. Allah will follow his sins. وَمَنْ تَتَبَّعَ اللَّهُ عَوْرَتُهُ يَفْضَحُهُ وَلَوْ فِي جَوْفِ بَيْتِهِ That the one who, who follows, who go out seeking for the sins of people and then call people's attention to it, Allah will follow your sins. And the one who Allah follows, the ones whose sins Allah follows, He will disgrace you even if you are in the secrecy of the precincts of your own house. Hiding in the belly of your house, He will disgrace you with it. So we are to be careful. We should not recognize. And, and there's another hadith which has some weakness. But the hadith says that man ayyara akhahu bidhambin qattaba min. The one who speaks bad of a person of a sin, speaks bad of a person's sin from which they have done tawbah. Because we see people, we don't know. We see people commit sin and then we talk about it. And we have no idea that this person may have committed 
uh, may, may have made tawbah, may have made repentance, and Allah may have wiped his, state, his slate clean, and he has nothing on him. He said that, مَنْ عَيَّرَ أَخَاهُ بِذَنْبٍ قَدْ تَابَ مِنْهُ لَمْ يَمُتْ حَتَّى يَعْمَلَهُ that the one he will not die except that he will also be, be made to do that same sin. That person will, will be corrupted in that same sin. So we should be very careful about how we treat our brothers, how we speak about, how we speak towards them, how we look, how we respond to people's tragedies and not fall into this culture of, and it is in fact the the, the main tragedy of this is this new element in our lives of seeking entertainment all the time. We want to be entertained and this is part of it, is that we see this as just innocent entertainment and not realize that we are going against Allah, we are going against the guidance of what Allah has sent and we are causing harm to people. Because if those people were to know the kinds of things that is happening, that you are laughing at them, then you will, they will suffer, they will, have, they will have pain. And for that pain, we will have to pay. So may Allah protect us, may Allah protect our hearts, protect us from, protect our tongue from this tragedy, the tragedy of sukhriya and ihtiza, which is mockery and laughing, laughing against people. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum. تبارك الله